Welcome to iLecture Online. Today we're going to talk a little bit more about physics and in particular optics and of course optics is a very broad subject and so we're going to take it one step at a time. First topic in optics is reflection. Reflection of light against like a mirror or a shiny surface and the only thing we need to know about reflection is that whenever we have an inbound ray reflecting off a shiny surface like a mirror the angle of incidence, which is defined by the angle between the incoming ray and the normal line to the surface. Now the normal line is the imaginary line that's perpendicular to the surface and the angle of incidence, which is the angle between the incoming ray and that normal line is always equal to the angle of reflection, the theta sub r as we call it, which is the angle between the exiting ray and the normal. So these two angles are always the same anytime there's a reflection. And so the entire equation comes down to the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection. Now that seemed easy, and it is. But now can we apply it to something that's a little bit more complicated? So let's say we have what we call here a corner reflector, and we have an inbound ray of light at an angle of 60 degrees with the horizontal. What will be the angle between the inbound ray and the exiting ray after it bounces off these two surfaces that are at right angles to one another. All right, so what we're going to do is in each case at every reflection we're going to use this principle right here and we're going to always draw the normal line to the uh, surface where the reflection occurs. So here's the normal and then we define this as the inbound ray angle or the incident angle and I like, to, I like to name them or number them like one, two, three, four, five, six. So the inbound angle is one, the exiting angle is two, and so forth throughout all the surfaces. And so of course, if this is 60 degrees, then this must be equal to 30 degrees. And then it's going to reflect. The rays will reflect in this direction until it hits this side right here. And so this is then the reflected angle, theta sub two. And of course, theta sub two must also equal theta sub one, which is 30 degrees. Okay, at that point, since it hits the wall right here, we're going to draw a normal line over here, and then we can say that this here is theta sub 3, and then this ray will reflect in this direction, and then this angle will then be called theta sub 4, and of course, because of the reflection, we know that theta sub 3 must equal theta sub 4. The question is, how big is theta sub 3? Well, we have ourselves a triangle right here, we know that this is a 30 degree angle, this is a 90 degree angle, so this therefore must be a 60 degree angle because the three angles must add up to 180 degrees. So this being a right angle, this then therefore is equal to 60 degrees, which means if theta sub 3 is 60 degrees, then theta sub 4 must also be 60 degrees. Now, this is the direction of the light, and so the, this is the outbound or exit ray, this is the inbound ray. What is the angle between those two? Well, let's see now. If I count this angle, plus this angle, plus this angle, plus this angle, I get 30, plus 30 is 60, plus 60 is 120, plus 60 is 180. So that means that the ray made a 180 degree change in its direction, which means that those two then must be parallel to each other. So therefore, the answer is they are parallel. And therefore, the angle is zero degrees, or if you want to be strictly mathematical about it, they differ by 180 degrees because one is inbound, the other one is outbound. So, but technically speaking, you could say that you know, the angle between the two rays is zero degrees. All right, so there's a simple example. Let's do one that's a little bit more challenging on our next video.